Hey, listen, once upon a time, we watched, uh, sort of the pilot episode of thunder. You remember that way back when? No, we did. Okay. Now we're going to watch the actual first thunder. What was the pilot episode of thunder? Right. I mean, it was one of those where it wasn't even on the, on the network. We had to go watch it on the tube of you. Oh. Uh, but today we are watching because we're sort of celebrating 25 years ago and it's hard to believe, but thunder is now officially 25 years old. Wow. Uh, the first episode aired on January 8th, 1998, which is the 25th anniversary exactly to the day of when you and I are recording this on Sunday morning, January 28th. Hope everybody had a great new year and now it's time for us to talk about thunder now just to sort of catch everybody up there's a lot of stuff going on in wcw where just a few days past the biggest wcw show of all time not bash at the beach 1994 which was huge when hulk hogan and rick flair finally squared off but this set the high water mark it was sting challenging hollywood hogan for the nwo slash wcw world heavyweight championship and of course, we all know what happened with Nick Patrick and the supposed fast count. If maybe you'd like to hear from Nick about what really happened, we just talked about that over on adfreeshows.com. We had a chat with both Mr. Nick Patrick and Eric Bischoff and broke it down. But of course, in the middle of all that, oh, by the way, we've also got the hottest heel from the other show, just fresh off of the Montreal screw job. So we debut Bret Hart on December 15th, making the special guest referee throw him in Starcade and the other match that happens of consequence. Can't believe this is a real sentence. Eric Bischoff versus Larry Zabisco with nitro hanging in the balance. The idea being they wanted to do an NWO nitro and a WCW thunder. And that's what we're going to watch here is the very first thunder. Of course, Larry Zabisco won. So it's not necessarily NWO this WCW that. And now we've just got to hire a bunch of new talent, set up a new set, and we're going live. And the Nitro before this was the very first three-hour Nitro. And this episode, the very first Thunder, is a three-hour Thunder, but then it's going to go to two hours after that. Tony, this is a company that enjoyed incredible success with a two-hour Nitro and no Thunder. We've added a third hour and now expanded thunder or added thunder to the roster as well. So we went from two hours a week to six hours a week of live programming in a week. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes people gloss over that fact, Tony. And they say, cause listen, Bischoff says it all the time. Thunder was a bad call. Thunder was maybe the beginning of the end thunder, you know, exposed our weaknesses. We messed up a good thing. It, had to expand the roster. We had to run ragged on with the crew, blah, blah, blah. But it's sort of lost in the shuffle is, oh yeah. At the same time, we took nitro to a three hour show. Nitro is a three hour show. Never felt the same to me as nitro with a two hour show. Would you agree with that? It's terrible. Well, what we're doing now is we are watching the decline, the actual decline of, of WCW. Yes. And it started again with me, with the, the shitty finish at, at Starcade. Yes. And then the shittier finish on Nitro when we went off the air before we had a finish, right for the Stinger Splash. We covered that. Last week. And, uh, last week. And now we got Thunder. So we you can connect the dots to see why we went to the shitter. And again, Eric says Thunder was a bad call. Thunder was TBS's call. Not his, yeah. He didn't right. want it. He didn't want it. Nobody wanted Thunder. And there again is the rub, and there again is the reason, and I know I'm right on this, why WCW would have never worked. Because you cannot have a television company that has no idea how to run a wrestling company call the shots. And that's why WCW went down, because it was owned by a television company. 